whoops. <laughs> wow, a couple sips of beer mission and things get crazy. Hey everyone, it's Amanda. I am back in my kitchen making some chicken milanese, or milanese style, I should say, which is a breaded and sauteed chicken. Oh, chicken in this case. And it's a recipe from Everyday Dory. I'm taking some chicken breasts and I'm using my very beloved meat pounder, as you know, to break it up and flatten it out. And I'm doing it between sheets of plastic. Now, we are gonna move on to the breading phase. And so you do this, this is the first thing you do, and in fact, you can do it hours in advance because it cooks up uh, more crisply if you bread the chicken and stick it in the fridge. Also, she says use bowls, but I'm gonna use these little um, baking sheets because I think it's uh, easier to work with for breading. If you, if you can um, make your own breadcrumbs, do it. And or if you have a great bakery that you can get breadcrumbs from, you should also go for it. But you know, there's nothing wrong with a Progresso breadcrumb right here, plain. So you wanna season your breadcrumbs and I like to season it pretty heavily, as well as the egg. The reason I wanted to do this recipe is because it is not, it's a Milanese with a salad on top that isn't, does not involve tomatoes. So I like, I love Milanese, but I want, I want to be able to eat it when tomatoes aren't in season. And this recipe calls for celery, cucumbers, bell pepper, and herbs, and some greens. And I just thought, that sounds cool. So here we go. I've got a baking sheet lined with parchment. So I'm gonna take my chicken and kind of peel it out of the plastic wrap. You're going to dip it into the breadcrumbs first. Okay, you're supposed to do this with one hand, I know. And I always forget that and then I end up having stuff all over. Then the egg, get it nicely coated. And then the breadcrumbs. Okay, and here you wanna make sure that you get them nice and nicely coated. I'm gonna stick this over here on the bread, on the um, parchment, and then move on to my next one. Okay, so when you're done, you should have nicely breaded chicken, and you should have one hand that looks like that, and one hand that's clean, or mostly clean. I stick these in the fridge and while we make the salad, and we will cook these in a bit. So, while the chicken is chilling, I'm gonna make the salad. So the salad is kind of this nice mix of all sorts of greens. So I've got dill, which I'm about to chop, with some cilantro mixed in, and then we're gonna give it a nice chop. It's only, it calls for a tablespoon. For four people, that's just not very much. So what I am gonna do is, probably much more like a quarter cup or more, I'm gonna make it a very herby salad. So you can just, this is clearly a recipe that you can play around with, so. Now, you're supposed to add it to a bowl with a handful of baby greens. Put these in here. Okay, now, next, we've got um, Persian cucumber, which I'm gonna slice in half, and then I'm gonna cut on the bias. Add that, boop, and then some celery. And I am, as you can see, I'm including the leaves, because I like the leaves. I don't like celery in stock, but I like I like good fresh celery. And if you've ever had like celery from the green market, it's amazing. It has so much sweetness. And now I'm going to show you. This is a trick that Meryl taught me. Meryl is my co-founder. Um, this is her way of trimming and deseeding a pepper, which, as you can see, very neatly takes out the core, takes out this stem, and then leaves you with this nice rectangular piece that you can cut into sections. I actually kind of like these pieces because they are they slice into these kind of wacky shapes. Okay, I'm gonna do one of these sections and then save the rest. And then we're gonna add that Got that. Now it's time to make some dressing. And then we're gonna dress it, and then we're gonna saute the chicken so it'll give a few minutes for the salad to just relax. Okay. Now, the dressing, Dory has you do it into a jar, and it's lemon juice. How much is it? We've got, yeah, a tablespoon of lemon juice, a tablespoon or two teaspoons of white balsamic, 
you don't have white balsamic, use another vinegar you like. And then we're gonna do uh, a tablespoon and a half of extra virgin olive oil. Okay, my jar is a little bit probably too bigger than I need, but it's gonna be fine. I'm gonna add a bunch of salt and pepper. Give it a nice good shake. Okay. And then I'm gonna pour that over here. I think, ooh, it's like just cutting it. Okay, but I think because I added so many extra herbs. And I'm gonna mix this with my hands. I'm gonna set this aside. And then we're gonna head over to the stove. Dory recommends nonstick. My nonstick is ceramic, and so I don't wanna do it over too high heat. So I'm gonna do it over uh, medium on it in a cast iron, a seasoned cast iron, because I think it'll still, uh, it's not gonna stick, and it, <laughs> famous last words, but it's, and it's also gonna be, uh, it'll help, you know, get it nice and brown and crisp. So you're supposed to use a tablespoon of butter, or sorry, <laughs> olive oil that would be, and butter, and I'm going to approximate here. It's getting nice and foamy and bubbly, so that's telling me that it's about ready. Let's take our nicest piece first. I think it's this one. Yeah, I'm gonna put that right there. You wanna make sure they have enough room. Yeah, I think two max. And then we're gonna let that sit and we're not gonna bother it, okay, until it's nice and toasty and brown. You probably need a few minutes per side. Somebody smells chicken. Yes. Or beer. I just opened a beer. What do you think? I am going to do a beer mission <laughs> because it's that time of day. It's 617. It's called Barn Rocker Ale and it is by Oyster Bay Brewing Company. Truth be told, I've had it before. It's good. And I thought it would go well with a Milanese-ish dinner. That's nice. Okay. So I'm gonna give this these guys a little peek. Oh wow, it's really brown already. Look at that. Okay. Give that a turn. Kind of gets this one a turn. Oh, that one got nice, real brown. All right. Then I'm gonna add a little butter to the pan because um, you know the breadcrumbs definitely drink up the butter and the oil, and so and you don't want it to have like a kind of dry surface. Try this one. It seemed like it was a little thinner. Now that leaves a little bit more time. Okay, so then if you if you need more time, just get it, turn it down to low and let it do its thing. I'm gonna move these into the oven. And remember, at 300, we're not gonna like overcook, but they will continue cooking a little bit. So if yours are a little, slightly underdone. Okay, yes, I know. I should not be using these tongs, but whatever. Okay, there we go, into the oven. All right, next batch. All right, so when it comes time to plate, you wanna have your chicken on a plate, and then I'm gonna grab a handful of salad. And then a nice wedge of lemon. Virgo has to wash her hands. Okay, let's give it a taste. Oh, that chicken is perfect. This is so good, and I love it because you don't have to wait for tomato season. You can do any herbs you wanted. You just want some things to have a little bit of crunch, um, a, like nice, fresh kind of you know vegetal flavor to uh, contrast the richness of the chicken. I hope you'll give this a try, and <laughs> thanks for hanging hanging with me as I bumble through. And I'll see you next time. Okay, bye.